African drums are talking. On and on they boom, just as they have for countless eons, causing the myriad human pulse to throb in unison. These drums are the most primitive telegraph known to man, and they bring you a story of Africa. Through impenetrable walls of jungle, the sound vibrates. Over wastes of veldt and swampland, bringing you a picture of sun-soaked earth, steaming swamp, juju groves, and jungle. Professor Anton Edwards, while in Africa, comes into possession of a severed and preserved human head that talks. The professor maintains it is the language of lost Atlantis, the same that he has been reconstructing for years. This theory makes possible the stories told by natives of a marvelous white tribe known as the Golden Race. The professor, his daughter Lorna, and his assistant, Jack Martin, are in camp. With them is Nguru, a huge native Maasai prince. Lorna was found walking in a trance, and for safety was tied to her bed. Later they found her gone, and the ropes on her bed still intact. It is night in the African jungle. Great heavens, sir. What's the meaning of this? It's... it's black magic. I can swear those ropes haven't been touched. Are you positive of that, Jack? Absolutely. Mm, I didn't dream things were as serious as this. Well, see for yourself, Professor. Those knots are exactly as I made them. Extraordinary. Very extraordinary. Unguru. Aye, Buana. Tell me what you know of this, or what you think. Unguru know nothing. Body sleep. Knows him no sleep. Melum devil talk. Come, poly, poly. Shenzi all sleep. Missy go for palava. No see. Pass. I come. But where is she in Guru? Did you see her go? No, he says he didn't see her go. But he knows she went to talk with the devil. Then what's to be done? Track him, Missy, little Buana. That's the idea, Nguru. Let's go outside, Jack. See if you can pick up the trail, warrior. Huh. Now, no buona. Come. Yes, look. She must have passed over that patch of dust and headed straight across the clearing. Mm. Come on. We have to hurry to keep up with Nguru. I'd like to get my hands on anyone who's responsible for this business. Do you think I wouldn't, sir? Isn't Nguru covering the ground too quickly to see anything definite? Uh, he knows what he's doing. Give him a little moonlight and he'd track a night owl. Can you remember doing anything that might have offended one of the witch doctors around here? Why, nothing that I can think of, Jack. Why do you ask? Well, it seems to be the only logical solution to the strange happenings lately. Oh, I'm very careful about that. I had to send one of my boys back to his village for stealing a few days ago. But I don't think that could have any bearing on this. No, he was perfectly affable about it. Did you flog him for it? No, just paid him off and told him to trek. Stealing is second nature with some of these black children. We mustn't be too hard on them sometimes. But how in the name of all that's sensible did Lorna get out of those ropes without untying them? Oh, Lord, I'm worried still. I know, Jack, but we're doing everything that's possible. I wish the girl had told me about that feeling of something out in the bush calling to her, though. Why did she keep it from me? Didn't want to worry you, I guess. She was very nervous when she told me. Hmm. Hello. And Goro stopped. Mini on Goro. Mazungo, come. Walk a missy. Now, no. A white man? There's another track. Great Scott, it's the mark of a booted foot. Ron has been found by a white man. No native wears boots up country. Tell me, Unguru, have you heard any drum talk of other white men around here? Nay, Buana. Drum he speak you, me. Hmm. That's strange. I haven't heard any other. Well, let's keep on going. Aye, Buana. Well, I'm stumped, sir. What do you make of it? Lord knows, Jack. Unless a white man around here has found her wandering about. But if there were another white safari, within 50 miles we'd have heard of it. What's the excitement now, Nguru? Now, no. Simba trailer. Why? Lion tracks. It's stalking Lorna and we haven't a rifle with us. Got it, Nguru. Huh? Huh? Oh, too, eh? 
Well, I've got my forty-five, but heaven help us if we get close enough to use it. There are two of them. We might stop one, but if they charge together, well... Well, come on, let's hurry. They won't charge unless they're hungry. I hope they've eaten recently. Well, they probably have. If they were very hungry, we'd have heard them charging before now. Maybe the fellow with Lorna has a rifle. Ten to one he has, so don't worry. Buana, Buana, Missy, Nauna. Where? Yes, there she is. Uh, Going into that grove of trees. By herself. There's no one with her. Whoever it was must have heard us coming and left hurriedly. Quick, come on. Lions are getting closer. Lorna! Lorna! Wait. What's that moving in the tree above her head? It's swinging down. Look. It's a huge snake. A python. Uh, uh, for heaven's sake, shoot, sir. No good at this distance. Where's Nguru going? Throwing stick. Watch. <clears throat> ah, good shot, Nguru. That stopped him. I can finish him now. Uh. Lorna. Lorna. She's fainted, sir. Mm. Hold her head down. That's right. That'll get the blood back into her brain. Can't but that was a close call. Thanks for the throwing stick, Nguru. Great shot. Asante Sana. Uh huh. Now, Nabuana. Huh? What is it? Why, George, he's right. If that isn't a sacred snake, I don't know one when I see one. Let's see. Yes, you're right. It's a mock python. But I don't think it belongs around here. Might have wandered from its special grove, eh? Well, let's hope it has. We don't want any snake worshippers hauling around our camp. Well, if it belongs around here, we're in for a hectic time, I'm afraid. She's coming out of it, sir. Mm. Lorna. Lorna, dear. You're all right now. We're with you. This is Jack. Um, yes. I'm all right now. Yes. Uh... What? Well, hello, Jack. What on earth are you looking so... Why, Father. What in the name of goodness are we doing out here? Where are we? Now, don't bother your head about that now. We're all together. That's the main thing. Why, have we ever been separated? What's all this She about? doesn't remember a thing, sir. Oh, heavens, what should I remember? <gasps> oh, what's that? Now, don't worry. It's dead. I shot it. But I saw it move. Muscular reaction, that's all. Always happens to pythons. A python? Yes, we'll tell you about it later, dear. Oh. We've got to go back to camp as fast as we can. Better take that snake along, Professor, or bury it. If these natives... Well, we have in time now. We've got to get back to camp. But how on earth did we come away now, from don't there? don't ask questions now, Lorna. Be thankful we're all together. Which way do we go? Walk. I'm all turned around. Walk for moon, little Buana. Yeah, he says to follow the path of the moon. That way? I'd have sworn it was any other way but that. We must have been going in circles. We were. Lorna was heading right back to camp. And Guru, where did those other tracks leave Lorna's? Did you notice? Nay, Buana. Snake him take a my. Uh, we'll look for his tracks in the morning. I want to know who that bird is. Come on, let's get started. Oh, Father, how can I? I haven't any boots on. Hmm? Oh. Oh, bless my soul, of course. I, I'd forgotten all about that. I'll carry you, sir. You go on. We'll keep you inside. Yes, you go on with him, girl, Father. Hmm. I want to talk to Jack. Well, all right. Yeah. What are you doing, Jack? Trying to measure the snake. He must be at least 24 feet long. Yes, fine specimen. But if you want any help, call out. Come on, Unguru. Aye, Buana. Ready, Lona? Yes. All right. Up you come. <laughs> That's comfortable? Of course it is. Oh, Jack, you don't have to tell me what happened. I've been putting things together since I woke up, and, and it's horrible. But I didn't want Father to be worried. That's why I said nothing before. You're a brick, Lorna. Tell me what happened uh, when you left us tonight and went to your tent. Well, I experienced that same feeling again. You know, the one I was telling you about, like like something calling me, urging me to walk out of camp. Well, did you see anything? I mean, did you see anything out of place? Like someone snooping around your tent, a face in the bushes, or eyes looking at you? Not a thing, Jack. I can't account for it. I fought the feeling off and went to bed, but while I was lying there, something persisted. It seemed to double in intensity. It's a terrible feeling, Jack. Seems to pull at the very roots of the brain. Why didn't you call me, dear? You know where I was. Yes, with Father. That's the reason I didn't call you. I hate to worry him. The thing is so intangible. I was afraid he'd think I was foolish. But, Lorna, don't you realize that there's any witchcraft being worked around here, that your father's the right man to cope with it? Yes, I suppose I should have told him. 
But he's so taken up with his plans. I hated to worry him. Well, you don't have to tell him now. He knows all about it. Do you know, we found you sleepwalking earlier tonight. What? We took you back and roped you to the bed. You seemed to be sleeping soundly when we left you. And later, when we came to look, you were gone. The ropes hadn't been touched. Jack, what in the world happening to me? It all sounds like a magician's dream. Oh, I'm afraid. What's that? Great Scott. I'd forgotten all about those lions. Hold tight, we'll have to run for it. I guess we've got too far behind. Good gad. What's the matter? There are two lions standing in our path. Oh. They're between us and your father. See them? Oh, yes. Fire a shot, Jack. Maybe it'll frighten them away. I haven't a gun. Your father has the only one we brought. What can we do? I'll put you down. Now, if they start to charge, see that tree there? Yes. Well, if they come for us, you run for that tree and do the best climbing you've ever done. But what about you? I can't leave you. Hello. Hello. Stay to the tree. Your father's seen what's happened. Now, don't forget if they charge, run. Look out. They're coming. Run, Lorna. Run. 